When people talk about metal or any alternative music genre, they typically classify it as rock. And it's annoying because this rock cannot be the same as this rock. There's a very clear difference. Here, we have grape jelly. Here, we have strawberry jelly. They're the same food, but they taste super different. And in this specific case, it feels like our food is just any song that has an electric guitar. So today, I'm going to show you every single flavor of metal. Starting with some of the most common and mainstream subgenres like our grape jelly, ending with some of the weirdest, most unknown, obscure sh you can possibly think of. Like jalapeno pepper jelly. Yeah, that's a flavor. Now, I'm not gonna pretend like I'm the king of subgenres either. Some of these genres I didn't even know existed. So I'm gonna heavily rely on Wikipedia, and if there's wrong information on there, I'm sorry. Go change the wiki yourself. You can do that. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm also gonna hit you with a few bands after explaining the genre. That way you can check it out yourself if it interests you. So let's go over every single genre of metal. Now before we start, there's a few words you have to know in order to understand some of these genres. For example, some genres you're going to see post blank, right? Like you hear post metal, post hardcore, post rock, whatever. When something says post, it normally suggests moving beyond the traditional style, indicating a new direction or evolution. If something has core at the end, it typically indicates it's a blend of said genre and hardcore. Industrial music was characterized by heavy percussion, fast tempos, synthesized or electronic sounds, and distorted vocals. When you hear breakdown, that's this. This is a breakdown, and there's different styles of it. When you hear blast beats, these are blast beats. When you hear noise, noise is unpitched, uncontrolled, loud, unmusical, or unwanted sound. If you hear drone, drones are long and sustained sounds, such as notes and chords. They carry on for a very long time without variation. It's typically used for ambient and to set the atmosphere. Now, those are all the words you really need to know so you can understand a lot of these subgenres. It's okay if you forget because as it becomes relevant, I'll touch on it again. Now, let's get started with layer one. By the way, if you subscribe, you can be a part of this. At 10,000 subscribers, I'm letting the viewers choose what I tattoo in my lip. And there's no limitations. It could be anything you want as long as it's not offensive. I'm not gonna walk around with the F slur tattooed on my lip. I also have a second channel that's based around the content I do on stream. And lastly, there is a join button. If you want member exclusive podcasts, go ahead and click that. Now let's go over layer one, the most common genres, starting with heavy metal. This is the genre where every single genre we're gonna talk about today is rooted from. Obviously, heavy metal is rooted from somewhere else, but that's a conversation for another day. Plain old regular vanilla heavy metal is traditionally characterized by loud distorted guitars, dense bass and drum sound, and vigorous vocals. The first band that comes to mind for me is Black Sabbath. Now, Black Sabbath is very important because they inspired a lot of different subgenres but I do feel like they're kind of the face for traditional heavy metal. Like if you hop on their Spotify and check their top songs, a lot of them is just plain old heavy metal. Glam metal. This is one of my least favorite subgenres on the iceberg, just cause in my opinion, it could be a little annoying to listen to. A lot of bands do this really high pitched vocal vibrato thing that I don't like, but it's also known as hair metal or pop metal. This genre features pop influenced hooks and guitar riffs, these upbeat rock anthems, and slow power ballads. And it borrows heavily from 1970s glam rock like style and fashion. Some faces of the genre is Motley Crue, Kix, and Night Ranger. And also the goofy goober rock scene from SpongeBob. Grunge. The genre featured the distorted electric guitar sound used in both punk rock and heavy metal genres. Although some bands performed with more emphasis on one or the other. Like these genres, grunge typically uses electric guitar, bass guitar, drums, and vocals. Grunge also incorporates influences from indie rock bands such as Sonic Youth. Lyrics are typically angst-filled and introspective, often addressing themes such as social alienation, self-doubt, abuse, neglect, betrayal, social and emotional isolation, addiction, psychological trauma, and a desire for freedom. It's just a little too depressing for me. If you really want to feel sad, put on some grunge shit at 2 a.m. right after a breakup. That'll do it for you. One, Nirvana 
The word grunge is American slang for someone or something that's repugnant and also for dirt, which explains the style, which I like. I'm not talking shit. Bands include Nirvana, obviously, Alice in Chains, and Soundgarden. Thrash Metal Thrash Metal, or simply Thrash, is an extreme subgenre of heavy metal characterized by its overall aggression and often fast tempo. The song usually uses fast beats and low register guitar riffs, overlaid with some shredding style of lead guitar work. The lyric subject matter often includes criticism of the establishment, opposition to armed conflicts, and at times it shares a disdain for the Christian religion. So just imagine heavy metal that's way faster and has some lead guitar shredding. Bands include Anthrax, Megadeth, and Slayer. Speed Metal Imagine the fine line between thrash and heavy metal, not too traditional but also not too thrashy. That perfect balance that scratches both of your itches but it's not quite unitchy yet. It came a few years before thrash and it's a little bit more melodic versus thrash feeling like it has more of like a punk influence than anything. Bands include Midnight, Exciter, and Motorhead. Lowering down to the second layer, you might notice that some of these genres you still heard of, you may or may not like the genres, but you've definitely heard the name somewhere. Starting with new Metal. new Metal is one of the more popular subgenres to date, and also one of the most confusing. Because you'll have a band like Slipknot that's considered new metal, but then you'll also have Linkin Park considered new metal, and they sound nothing alike. And that's because new metal has its own sub subgenres. It's generally characterized as having down tuned guitars, sometimes seven string guitars, no guitar soloing, and influences from other music genres, usually rap or industrial. So any band with a DJ gets put in this genre. Overall, the most popular bands are like Korn. Limp Bizkit, Slipknot, and Linkin Park. There are so many bands that went mainstream though, so if you're gonna be that guy, like, dude, I can't believe you mentioned this subgenre, but not this band, like, dude, shut the fuck up, all right? Delete that comment, don't even post it because I'm aware. Go suckle on your mama's teeth. If you listen to new metal, her milk probably tastes like cigarettes and butterfly tramp stamps. Funk metal. Funk metal infuses heavy metal music, often thrash, with elements of funk and punk rock. This genre was pretty popular at some point because you had, for example, Red Hot Chili Peppers that went crazy mainstream and they're considered funk metal. You even had Incubus and Living Color that helped out the funk scene. Kawaii metal. Kawaii metal is a fusion of heavy metal and J-pop. Kawaii meaning cute in Japanese. This genre feels a lot like anime intros but with balls. The band that really puts this genre on the map was Baby Metal with their song Gimme Chocolate in 2014. It's very cutesy and catchy sounding Japanese vocals, but then you got these screams that make them sound like an absolute demon. It's a very interesting genre for sure. Of course you got Baby Metal, you got Band Made, and you got Lady Baby. But keep in mind, very similar to New Metal, you may have multiple Kawaii Metal bands that sound pretty different. Because if you look at this giant list that I'm covering, if you mix any of this with J-pop, it's considered kawaii metal. So have fun. Death metal. I feel like this is thrash metal's younger, more attractive, bigger, smarter, faster brother. And also angrier. We can't forget angry. Extreme metal. So extreme metal isn't really a genre, but it's more of an umbrella term. It categorizes a specific group of genres. So whenever I say a genre is blended with extreme metal, the term usually refers to more of an abrasive, harsher, underground, non-commercialized style associated with the speed metal, thrash metal, black metal, death metal, and doom metal genres. So you're going to notice that I mentioned a lot of these genres are blank fused with extreme metal. Groove Metal Groove Metal is heavily influenced by thrash metal, but it's focused more on heaviness as opposed to speed, although fast songs are still common within the genre. The genre emphasizes on heavy guitar riffs. Guitar solos are a common place as well. Guitars are generally more down-tuned than in thrash, and vocals typically are yelling, growling, screaming, or even raspy singing. Thrash really isn't my thing, but it's definitely opened a lot of doors for cooler genres like this to exist. Bands include Hell Yeah, Pantera, and even Lamb of God. Power Metal Power metal combines characteristics of traditional heavy metal with speed metal. Generally, power metal is characterized by a faster, lighter, and more uplifting sound. 
Power metal bands usually have anthem-like songs with fantasy-based subject matter and strong choruses, thus creating a dramatic and emotionally powerful sound that sounds like it could be in theater. That was a lot of words, so here's power metal as simple as I could possibly make it. Imagine if Dungeons & Dragons basement dwellers decided to start a metal band. I think that's pretty accurate. By the way, I'm not knocking on D&D players. In fact, I want to start a campaign. So DMs, hit me up on Discord. Bands include Dragon Force, Gamma Ray, and Rhapsody of Fire progressive metal and gent. I'm going to talk about both of these genres at the same time just so it's a little bit easier to understand. The genres go pretty hand in hand. Progressive metal typically showcases the extreme technical proficiency of the performers and usually uses unorthodox harmonies, as well as complex rhythm and frequent meter changes. The rhythmic aspects are especially emphasized in gent, and gent is a subgenre of progressive metal characterized by its use of complex and strange rhythm patterns. It's kind of like Prague is developing and developing and then Meshuggah came in. They kind of pioneered this really cool specific sound. Then they kind of marked this checkpoint for progressive metal. But here's the issue. We're stuck at this fucking checkpoint. Now don't get me wrong. Gen is cool as fuck. And it's one of the better sounding genres on this list. By the way, I know that some people don't even consider it a genre, but we will for the sake of this list. But it does feel like progressive metal is becoming obsolete because not many bands are trying to be progressive. Like all the bands that I listen to, they kind of stuck with Gen. And again, it's not a bad thing. I like how it sounds. But I just think progressive could be a little more cool of a genre. Now don't get me wrong. There's a bunch of experimental bands and I'm sure there's progressive metal bands that are actually trying to push some limits. But I can't name any off the top of my head. So if you know some... Let me know in the comments because I would love to check them out. But for now, some cool progressive bands would be bands like Tool, Dream Theater, Symphony X. Then for Gent, we could kind of cut some of these old people out. You got bands like Volumes. You got bands like Periphery. You got Monuments. And of course, you got Mashuga, Alternative Metal. Alternative metal combines heavy metal with influences from alt-rock and other genres not normally associated with metal. Alternative metal bands are often characterized by heavily downtuned mid-paced guitar riffs, a mixture of accessible melodic vocals and harsh vocals, and sometimes unconventional sounds within other heavy metal styles. I'm gonna be real with you, dude. Pretty much anything that's a combination of metal and another genre that's not heavy at all can be considered alternative metal. Like here you have bands like Slipknot, you got Bring Me The Horizon, and even Motionless and White can all be considered alternative metal. Welcome to tier three, where things are gonna start getting a little bit more sad, and you're gonna notice a lot of genres are pretty much the same thing, but different like lyrically or thematically. I'll point it out when it happens. Doom Metal. Doom Metal typically uses slower tempos, low tuned guitars, and a much thicker or heavier sound than other heavy metal genres. Both the music and the lyrics are intended to evoke a sense of despair, dread, and impending doom. The genre is strongly influenced by the early work of Black Sabbath. You put on a doom metal song and then you get reminded that death is inevitable and the planet could explode at any second, at any time, and there's nothing we can do about it. Bands include Pentagram, St. Vitus, Candle Mass, Trouble, there's a ton. Christian Metal. Christian Metal, also known as White Metal, Jesus Metal, or Heavenly Metal, is just heavy metal. That sing about Jesus and stuff. One genre that's the same as another, but lyrically different, like I said earlier. Bands include Saint, Strider, and Messiah's Prophet. Gothic Metal. Gothic Metal is a fusion genre combining the aggression of heavy metal with the dark atmospheres of gothic rock. Just imagine if Dracula started a band with lyrics that are melodramatic, fantasized, romantic, dark, or sometimes gloomy. There's definitely a depressive edge, but it's not depressing like doom metal. Bands that are in the genre are Typo Negative, Paradise Lost, and Moonspell. Melodic Death Metal. The genre features the heaviness of death metal, but with highly melodic or harmonized guitar riffs and solos, and often features high-pitched shrieked vocals, alongside the low-pitched growls commonly featured in traditional death metal. I'm not gonna lie, this feels like a newer version of speed metal. The melodic riffs and solos combined with the speed of death metal, it kind of makes it feel old-timey. If you're into that, go for it. 
I'm just not. Bands include Flames, Children of Bottom, and Dark Tranquility. Rap Metal Rap metal is a fusion genre which combines hip-hop with other heavy metal. It usually consists of heavy metal guitar riffs, funk metal elements, rap vocals, and sometimes turntables. Now don't confuse this with new metal. New metal and rap metal, they do overlap at times, but they are different genres. Bands like P.O.D., Rage Against the Machine, and Crazy Town all fit pretty well into this genre. Avant-garde metal. This genre has avant-garde elements, including non-standard and unconventional sounds, instruments, song structures, playing styles, and vocal techniques. This feels like a sophisticated take on metal, because the definition of avant-garde is basically something experimental or unusual, especially in the arts or the people introducing them. It kind of makes me think of Squilliam Fancy Some. Bands include Diablo Swing Orchestra, Ram Zet, and Death Spell Omega. Death Doom Metal Death Doom combines the slow tempos and pessimistic or depressive mood of Doom Metal with the deep growling vocals and double kick drumming of Death Metal. Dumbing it down, this is just Doom Metal with Death Metal styles of vocals and drumming. I actually think this is way more fun to listen to than Doom Metal. Bands include Paradise Lost, Swallow the Sun, and November's Doom. Death Thrash Death Thrash is a genre that combines elements of death metal and thrash metal. It's characterized by its fast-paced, aggressive sound, intricate guitar riffs, and intense drumming. So yeah, that's right, you guessed it. It's a combination of death metal and thrash. Both genres are already super fast, so this one is fast as fuck. It's impressive because sometimes the drumming sounds straight up like an assault rifle. This is by far my favorite genre we spoke about already, but if you work out and you need music for that workout playlist, this is the genre. Bands include Death Chain, Sepultra, and Possessed. By the way, we are to the point where Wikipedia doesn't have a lot of these definitions, so I'm going a little deeper to find them. Old School Death Metal Old School Death Metal is a style of death metal. It refers to the old school ways of playing the music style in the late 80s and early 90s. Characterized by its slower and simpler song structures, less focus on the technical aspects of its composition, and less usage of blast beats. Bands include Morbid Angel, Dismember, and Napalm Death. I do feel like the newer version of death metal shits on old school. Again, my opinion, you don't have to agree. Just cause like I'm not a fan of the slow shit, dude. I like the shit that my brain could barely keep up with. We're like spoiled with how much fast shit we have these days. Technical death metal. Tech death is just death metal but focus on challenging, demanding instrumental skill and complex songwriting. It feels like a combination of progressive and death metal which is actually super cool. I checked out Soul by Death and this song took me through this fucking episode dude. It took me through a quest. It gave me the same energy as power metal, but it's just not as cringe. Bands include Death, Obscura, and Nile. Symphotic Death Metal Symphotic Death Metal is death metal, but it adds elements of classical music. So you'll hear instruments like pianos, violins, and even harps. It's a really nice contrast with the speed and vocals of death metal and beautiful sounding strings. It's like eating a burger, like a salty, savory burger, and then drinking like a sweet milkshake with it. Now I'm hungry. Bands include Flesh God Apocalypse, Septic Flesh, and XDO. I'm gonna start butchering band names, just so you know. Sludge Metal. It sounds exactly how you'd think with a genre name like this would sound. It combines elements of doom metal and hardcore punk. The genre generally includes slow tempos, tuned down guitars, and nihilistic lyrics discussing poverty, drug addiction, and pollution. I think lyrically, the genre is fine, but goddamn. This shit is slow! Now don't get me wrong, because some of this shit slaps, but the ones that slap lean more towards the hardcore elements rather than the doom elements. God damn, in general, some of these songs make me want to go to sleep, bro. Bands include Down, Acid Bath, and Mastodon. Folk Metal. Folk Metal combines traditional folk music and metal. Just imagine if Link tries to throw a metal show at like, Kakariko Village. So just imagine metal with some flutes, whistles, pipes, accordions, harmonicas, and even banjos at times. It's a pretty cool genre, but I can see it turning a lot of people off. Bands include Fin Troll, The Who, and Trollfest. Metalcore. This right here, this is my cup of tea. But there's a problem with the genre. I'll get to that, but first, the definition. 
Metalcore combines elements of extreme metal and hardcore punk. Metalcore is noted for its use of breakdowns, while other defining instrumentation includes heavy guitar riffs, often utilizing percussive pedal tones and double bass drumming. Vocalists in the genre typically perform screaming. More popular bands often combine this with the use of standard singing, usually during the bridge or chorus of a song. Now that's the definition, but it feels like we came full circle to the initial problem here and why we have subgenres in the first place. You know how I said everyone calls every genre rock? Well, if a song has some clean singing and a breakdown, people consider it metalcore. And to be honest, most metalcore doesn't even have hardcore influence anymore. Metalcore is so far apart of hardcore now, when you say that these two are like brothers or cousins or something, it's a fucking head scratcher. So here's three bands I'm gonna give you you listen to them and then you tell me if this makes sense. Ringworm, Bullet for My Valentine, and Architects. Have fun. Melodic Metalcore. Melodic Metalcore combines melodic death metal and metalcore. It has a heavy emphasis on melodic instrumentation, distorted guitar tones, palm muting, double bass drumming, blast beats, metalcore styled breakdowns, aggressive screaming, death growls, and clean singing. Bands include Kill Switch Engage, August Burns Red, and As I Lay Dying. Cross Thrash. It's kind of a tongue twister. Crossover, aka Cross Thrash, is a mix of thrash and hardcore. A lot of it leans really heavily to hardcore and tends to incorporate a lot of hardcore subculture. It's characterized by a generally metallic and thrashy sound that you'd associate with any notable thrash metal band, but often with shorter songs, even faster tempos, a more punk style of vocal delivery, and sometimes the presence of breakdowns. Bands here include Carnivore, Attitude Adjustment, and Body Count. Now, Body Count is super sick, and I don't know if I'm being biased because the vocalist is Ice T, but Body Count fucking slaps. Check them out. Neoclassical Metal. Neoclassical Metal is a subgenre of heavy metal music that's heavily influenced by classical music and usually features very technical playing, consisting of elements borrowed from both classical and speed metal music. This is kind of like a baby version of symphonic death metal. Bands include Concerto Moon, Warman, and Sassophony. Again, butchering names here, but whatever. Latin metal. Latin metal is heavy metal music with Latin origins, influence, and instrumentation such as Spanish vocals, Latin percussion, and rhythms such as salsa rhythm. This is another genre that I think may be just an umbrella term because it got tough to find bands that are just straight up Latin metal. Like if you Google Latin metal, you'll find shit, but the thing is they're like combinations of other genres. Like I'm noticing a lot of thrash, new metal and even hardcore but some cool bands i found was puya el nino and my favorite was ancla the last genre in this layer before shit starts getting real fucking weird is industrial metal industrial metal is the fusion of heavy metal and industrial music typically employing repeating metal guitar riffs sampling synthesizer and distorted vocals three bands i'm gonna toss on here are fear factory nine inch nails and ramstein Congratulations, you made it to layer four. We're at the point where things are gonna start getting a little weird. Not as weird as the deeper layers, but weird enough to ask yourself like, who the fuck listens to this shit? Next was supposed to be grindcore, but to understand the genre, you need a little bit of knowledge of two other ones. So I'm gonna cover those first. Thrashcore. Not to be confused with crossover thrash, which we spoke about already, this is basically sped up hardcore featuring blast beats. Bands include Electro Hippies, what Happens Next, and Vitamin X. Then we have Crust Punk, which is partly defined by its bassy and dirty sound. It's often played at a fast tempo with occasional slow sections. Vocals are usually raspy screams, but could also be grunted or growled. It's basically a dirtier version of punk with some heavy metal influence, and lyrically, is politically and socially charged. Bands include Doom, Hellbastard, and Axe Grinder. And now we get to Grindcore. Now this genre is very important, so make sure you pay attention. Because moving forward, you're going to see a lot of genres that's fused with grind. Grindcore is an extreme fusion genre of heavy metal and hardcore punk, drawing inspiration from abrasive sounding musical styles such as thrashcore, crust punk, hardcore, extreme metal, and industrial. Now you see why I wanted to explain the other genres first. Grindcore is considered a more noise-filled style of hardcore, while using hardcore trademark characteristics such as heavily distorted downtuned guitars, grinding overdriven bass, high-speed tempo, blast beats, 
and vocals which consists of growls, shouts, and high-pitched shrieks. Now what happens when you put all those genres and characteristics into one melting pot? An extremely noisy, fast, and loud genre. Bands include Napalm Death, Brujeria, and Extreme Noise Terror. Black metal, another very important genre, so please pay attention because a lot of genres are going to say blackened blank, and you got to know what that means. Common traits include fast tempos, a shrieking vocal style, heavily distorted guitars play with tremolo picking, and a raw lo-fi recording. When I say lo-fi, it's not lo-fi, girl, no. Lo-fi means low quality, pretty much, like unpolished recording. When something is lo-fi, it doesn't necessarily mean bad. It's just purposefully like that to bring this specific energy to the music. Black Metal has unconventional song structures and an emphasis on atmosphere. Artists often appear in corpse paint and adopt pseudonyms. Black metal lyrics typically attack Christianity and other religions. As for the atmosphere, they tend to go for like this really spooky, really dark vibe. Bands include Mayhem, Dark Throne, and Immortal. Death Grind. Death Grind, I'm sure you can guess, is the combination of death metal and grindcore. It's too punky to be pure death metal, but the songs are too long and complicated for it to be raw grindcore. Bands include Capital Decapitation, Terrorizer, and Exhume. Blackened Death Doom. Black and Death Doom is a genre that combines the slow temples and monolithic drumming of doom metal, the complex and loud riffage of death metal, and the shrieking vocals of black metal. And the atmosphere is kind of strange because it's like a disturbing combo of doom and black metal. Having the combination of the three genres are pretty cool because you can get experimental and lean more towards one genre than the other. Bands include Bolzer, False Coven, and Morist. Blackened death metal. This genre combines black metal and death metal, I'm sure you already knew, and the genre typically employs death growls, tremolo picking, blast beats, and satanic lyrics and imagery. And like black metal, they rock the corpse paint. Here we have Goat Horror, Behemoth, and Angel Corpse. Death Industrial. Death Industrial is an industrial subgenre typified by a dense, gloomy atmosphere, low end drones, harsh loops, and screamed and or distorted vocals. If you want to scare away your friends and family, this is the genre that you blast in your room. Bands include Death Now, Genocide, and MZ412. Death and Roll. This is death metal music that incorporates hard rock inspired elements to the overall sound. The achieved effect is that of death metal's trademark combination of growled vocals and highly distorted detuned guitar riffing with elements reminiscent of 1970s hard rock and heavy metal. So you'll hear crazy vocals with some fast and heavy sounding instruments, then get hit with some 90s style lead guitar shredding out of the blue, or some simple classic metal rhythm. Bands here include Entombed, Gorefest, and Six Feet Under. Drone Metal Drone Metal, aka Drone Doom, is a style of heavy metal that melds the slow tempos and heaviness of doom metal with the long duration tones of drone music. The vocalist typically does this spooky growl kind of style and the songs are long as fuck. So imagine drone music but scary and sometimes sad. This music feels more like you're trying to set a specific vibe for the room rather than like music you'll really bump to. Kind of like Christmas music, like nobody puts on Christmas music to fucking bump to it. They put it on for the vibe, the atmosphere, right? This genre can even pull off as like ending credits to a movie. Bands here include Boris, Sun, and Year of No Light. Stoner Metal. Stoner Metal is typically slow to mid-tempo, low-tuned, and bass-heavy. It incorporates elements of psychedelic rock, blues rock, and doom metal into a more repetitive and riff-centered style. Other common traits include melodic vocals and retro production. Stoner Metal and Doom kind of go hand in hand with similar vibes, but are different lyrically, and Stoner Metal definitely seems more repetitive and trippy. And it's cool because a lot of stoner metal bands get high while writing or incorporate weed into their show somehow, like passing around a blunt or encouraging the audience to smoke. Bands include Electric Wizard, Sleep, and High on Fire. Celtic Metal. Imagine folk metal, but Irish. Pirate Metal. Imagine folk metal, but piratey. 
Pirate metal bands usually incorporate sea shanties and their metal songs. That can be any subgenre, thrash to speed to whatever. They typically wear pirate outfits and use unique instruments for the pirate aesthetic, like fiddles and accordions, and sing about stealing other people's booty. Bands include Ailstorm, Running Wild, and Swashbuckle. Pagan Metal. Pagan Metal is just heavy metal or any subgenre with the pre-Christian traditions of a specific culture or region through thematic concept, rustic melodies, unusual instruments, or archaic languages. The difference between Celtic folk and Pagan Metal is just lyrically. Bands here include Primordial, Arcona and Wolf Chant, Deathcore. Deathcore is a combo of death metal with metalcore. The genre consists of death metal guitar riffs, blast beats, and metalcore breakdowns. And woo, it got that speed, it got that. The lyrics aren't always similar to death metal, but the genre definitely borrows the traditional growls and screams. Bands here include Lorna Shore, Suicide Silence, and White Chapel. Post metal. Post metal is a music genre rooted in heavy metal, but exploring approaches beyond metal conventions. Post metal offsets the darkness and intensity of extreme metal with emphasis on atmosphere, emotion, and even revelation. Developing an expansive but introspective sound, various imbued with elements of ambient, noise, psychedelic, progressive, and classical music and pretty often shoegaze and alt rock. Songs are typically long with loose and layered structures that discard the verse to chorus form in favor of crescendos and repeating themes. This one was kind of a lot. Like the definition to me in dummy, it's just experimental progressive metal with like a specific vibe to it. But then I checked it out and it's wild because it feels like instead of taking a few genres and mixing it together for a new outcome, this plays different genres and parts. Like the song will start atmospheric and shoegazy, but then it slowly transitions into straight up heavy metal on minute four or something. Then it ends with noise. Overall, this is one of those genres that are a little bit too tough to explain, so you kind of just got to check it out for yourself if you're interested. Bands include Neurosis, Isis, and Cult of Luna. Teutonic thrash metal. I don't get this genre. I really don't. Like, I don't understand the definition. I don't understand what sets it apart from thrash metal. By my understanding, it's literally just German thrash metal. I could be wrong. But if you're watching and you know what it is, let me know. Progressive metalcore. Progressive metalcore is progressive and metalcore together. Bands include Era, After the Burial, and Between the Buried and Me. On a serious note, it is a very cool combination. There's a lot of really cool and interesting breakdowns. If you want to check it out, I highly encourage you check out the three bands I just mentioned. Viking metal. Viking metal has a lyrical and thematic focus on Norse mythology, North paganism, and the Viking age. Viking metal is quite diverse as a musical style to the point where some consider it more of a cross genre term than an actual genre but it's typically seen as black metal with influences from nordic folk music common traits include a slow pace and heavy riffing style anthematic choruses use of both sung and harsh vocals a reliance on folk instrumentation and often the use of keyboards for atmospheric effect bands include bathory and enslaved black doom metal Black doom metal is a style of music that combines black metal and doom metal. I think these two genres already have a lot in common, so making a baby out of the two seems like a no-brainer. Bands here include Forgotten Tomb, Celtic Frost, and Catatonia. Epic Doom. Epic Doom is an old school doom metal style. Epic doom metal usually has power metal influence. Lyric themes also tend to be more epic and cheesy. And it's weird to imagine because power metal is so hype and energetic, and doom metal is the exact opposite. Remember Fairly Odd Parents when you had all the fairies? And then there was an entire race of evil fairy doppelgangers? That's what Epic Doom feels like. It's the evil power metal fucking doppelganger. Bands here include Candle Mass, While Heaven Wept, and Sorcerer. Medieval Metal. Imagine folk metal but medieval. I know this is the third time I've done this, but it's really the only way to explain these subgenres of folk metal. Bands include Extremo and Subway to Sally. Translating to New German Hardness, it's a genre born in Germany and Austria. This genre is a blend of alternative metal and or groove metal with elements from electro, industrial, and techno. I'm more than positive you've heard about one of the bands to do this first, Ramstein. 
you know, the Duhast fellas. Oriental metal. Oriental metal is used to describe music where Middle Eastern and Arabic music is used in conjunction with heavy metal or one of its many subgenres. This is another genre that's tough to actually consider it a genre because it could be any kind of metal with a Middle Eastern slash Arabic influence. So here we have Orphan Land, Al Namrud, and Mrath. Nintendo Core. One of my favorite genres in the iceberg because I remember staying up till like 3 a.m. playing flash games and listening to this nonsense. Nintendo Core is a broadly defined music style that most commonly fuses video game music with hardcore punk and or heavy metal. The genre is sometimes considered a direct subgenre of post hardcore and a fusion genre between metalcore and chiptune. A lot of bands also combine grind and deathcore influences and it's super fun to listen to. The band names are fun, the production quality is usually ass, and it hits me right on my nostalgic bone. Bands include 100 Dead Rabbits, Quick Hookshot the Skull Kid, and Horse the Band. Doom and Roll. Doom and Roll is a combo of Doom and Rock and Roll, very similar to Death and Roll, obviously for the roll part, taking bits and pieces from heavy metal and rock, but giving the genre a doom and dark twist. It's an interesting genre that kind of goes well together for some reason. It's like putting honey on your tuna sandwich. For some reason it works. Bands include Lucifer's Fall and Rat King Ghosts. Cavernous Death Metal. This is death metal but consists of slower tempos, huge drums, menacing and hypnotizing guitar riffs with lots of reverb and low death growls. I like this a lot because the song would be super fast then out of nowhere slow down and it kind of sounds like a breakdown or something. The genre is a little reminiscent of hardcore as well. I could just be talking out of my dick but that's just how I feel. Bands include Mortiferum and Spectral Voice. New Metalcore. So to refresh your memory, new metal in short is metal with influence from hip-hop, alt-rock, industrial, and grunge, and metalcore has breakdowns and screams and sometimes clean singing. So new metalcore is just the combination. Bands include Amur, Cane Hill, and Alpha Wolf. Mathcore. Mathcore is characterized by rhythmic complexity and tempo changes, such as those found in free jazz and math rock with the aggressiveness of hardcore punk and extreme metal. Now, I'm trying to figure out what the difference between mathcore and prog metal is. I may be getting this wrong, but I believe mathcore is a little more complex and the guitars aren't tuned as low. Mathcore also uses polymeter and it's not as heavy as prog, and I think it leans more towards the punk side of things. I can be butchering this, but again, if someone can tell me the difference, let me know. Mathcore bands include Dillinger Escape Plan, The Fall of Troy, and Converge. Jazz Metal This is jazz with metal influence and instruments, so you'll hear really interesting songs that make you feel not only sophisticated, but also a badass. Metal with saxophone and trumpets go pretty well together, not gonna lie. Just keep in mind that some bands may lean more towards the metal side. The vocalists even growl sometimes. So just explore and see what you're into. My favorite band in this genre is probably Panzer Ballot, but some other ones you can check out is Naked City and Cynic. Now the final genre in this layer is post-grunge. Post-grunge is an offshoot of grunge that has less abrasive or intense tone than traditional grunge. This may not sound like a huge difference on paper, but trust me, there's a difference when you listen to it. Some bands here could be considered Creed, Three Days Grace, and even Nickelback. Now, we're in the deep end. You've made it halfway. You've made it to the point of no return. Because this is when we slowly start transitioning from like regular normal subgenres to the obscure and weird fusions. Some fusions you wouldn't even think existed. Let's start with industrial black metal. In the early years of the 21st century, groups from the black metal scene began to incorporate elements of industrial music. These two genres kind of complement each other, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not a fan of black metal, but this actually makes black metal a little bit more listenable for me. With the help of the band Abora. Another band you can check out is Black Lodge. Black and Grindcore. This is black metal fused with grindcore, which is really fast and can be noisy at times, with a darker atmosphere and insane vocals. And let me tell you something, brother, this shit can get heavy. You can check out Young and in the Way and Revenge. Melodic Blackened Death Metal. This describes the style created when melodic death metal bands began being inspired by black metal. However, unlike most other black metal, this take on the genre would incorporate an increased sense of melody and narrative. Adding the melody does make blackened death metal a little more consumable for the average person. 
Bands include Embraced, Dissection, and God Dethroned. Brutal Death Metal. Brutal Death Metal is a subgenre of death metal that privileges heaviness, speed, and complex rhythms over other aspects, such as melody, and the vocals can get real low. This genre feels like grindcore's tighter, not as crusty looking cousin. I'm talking shit even though I'd prefer grindcore. Bands here include Suffocation, Devourment, and Benighted. Slam Death Metal. In contrast to other death metal styles, it's not generally focused on guitar solos and blast beats. Instead, it employs mid-tempo rhythms, breakdowns, and palm-muted riffing, and sometimes even hip-hop-inspired vocal and drum beat rhythms. You can check out Abominable Putridy, Brutal Slam Death Metal. Slamming Brutal Death Metal is brutal death metal but focuses on the mosh parts rather than the blasting parts. Here we have Sanity Slip and Extermination Dismemberment. War Metal. War Metal was black metal taken to its most extreme with the use of downtuned power chords, grindcore like tempo changes, and abrupt chaotic soloing. They really want to make blistering and chaotic sounds. If you like chaos and you like a dark atmosphere, this is your genre. Bands include Dilation, Black Witchery, and In Battle. Ambient Black Metal. Ambient Black Metal is a style of black metal that relies on heavy incorporation of atmospheric, sometimes dreamy textures, and it's therefore less aggressive. This isn't something that makes you want to bathe in holy water after listening to it or call an exorcist to do fucking stuff to my eardrums. Bands here include Dark Space and Midnight Odyssey. Atmospheric Black Metal. This focuses on the atmospheric element using slowly developing riffs, repetitive melodies, usually slow to medium tempos, and commonly synthesized ambient textures. This might be a little controversial to say, but to me, it's like the blend of Black and Death Doom with a sprinkle of epic doom. Just saying. Bands include Summoning and Wolves in the Throne Room. Post Black Metal. So as I stated earlier in the video, post is evolved. The term post black metal refers to music which is rooted in black metal, but has taken a new direction beyond the traditional aesthetics. Bands could include progressive, industrial, electronic, or post-punk elements, or just anything experimental in general. You can check out Alter for something like this. Blackened Crust Metal Black and Crust is a style of crust punk that borrows heavily from the sounds of black metal, walls of blast beats and tremolo guitar picking, and the use of screeched or screamed vocals. They take elements from the raw, lo-fi black metal spectrum rather than the ambient stuff. Bands include Dark Throne, Iskra, and Gallhammer. Black and Thrash Metal Black and Thrash, also known as Black Thrash, is exactly what you think it is. Two very obvious genres making a baby, taking the speed and style of thrash and taking the vocal style and vibe of black metal. Here we have Toxic Holocaust and Skeleton Witch. Psychedelic Black Metal. Black metal that emphasizes psychedelic features over ruthless bombast tends to be spacey, hypnotic, droning, detached, cosmic, super ambient, and trippy. Here you can check out Tongues and Woven Nest. Raw Black Metal. This is the OG black metal, black metal that seeks to return to the early roots of Norwegian black metal, opting for an even more primitive, chaotic, lo-fi, and bare-bones sounding music, rather than the melodic, cleaner, and higher quality shit we get today. Here we have Hexblad Ashpool and Sanguine Relic. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Symphonic black metal. This is black metal that incorporates symphonic and orchestral elements, basically spicing things up with some classical music. It's like classical music is Sonic the Hedgehog, and Symphonic Metal is the cooler evil Sonic, Shadow. Bands here include Emperor and Cradle. Gore Grind. Gore Grind is a fusion genre of grindcore and death metal. It's recognized for its heavily edited, pitch-shifted vocals and abrasive musicianship rooted in grindcore. Here you'll discover the lowest low screams, this is also when bands start to get gross with their aesthetic, lyrics revolving around gore and having gory album art. It feels like a dick measuring contest between the bands like, hey, who can have the most brutal, gory, thematic shit without getting in trouble? A lot of music is pretty good though, I'm not gonna lie. Here we have Dead Infection, Exhume, and Regurgitate. Sass. So what this genre does is they take a brutal genre and then they paint butterflies and rainbows on it but then it creates this big and beautiful moth. Sasscore is basically taking any heavier genre like 
hardcore, grindcore, post-punk, even math, and adding flamboyant mannerisms, homoerotic lyrical content, synthesizers, dance beats, and lisping vocal style. Some bands here are Blood Brothers, the plot to blow up the Eiffel Tower, and currently the most popular one is probably CU Space Cowboy. Folk Black Metal. This is just black metal with folk instruments and melodies layering behind it. Here we have bands like Winder, Selvins, and Arafel. Black and Roll. There are so many fucking subgenres of black metal, it's annoying. Black and Roll is a style of black metal that incorporates elements from 1970s hard rock and hard rock and roll music, as I'm sure you guessed. You can check out Cold. Epic Black Metal. Evil power metal that's less evil than Epic Doom. Instead of a Doom atmosphere, it's a blackened atmosphere, which isn't as scary for some reason. Maybe because I've been listening to so much black metal for this video, I'm desensitized. But here we have Untamed Land and Moongate's Guardian. Progressive Doom Metal. Progressive Doom is a fusion genre that combines elements of progressive metal and doom metal. Obviously. We have My Dying Bride, Pal Bearer, and Our Wake. Metal Gaze. This is heavy metal with minimalist ambient instrumentation and a wall of sound effects. It's kind of like metal, but it makes you feel tingly inside with the various sounds and effects this genre uses in its music. It's cool because some of the songs I checked out have heavier style drumming and even a mini breakdown from time to time, but the vocalist is just chilling. Bands here include Hum, Fleshwater, and Mascara. And I'm not gonna lie to you fellas, I think this is actually my favorite genre. I've checked out this entire playlist and there has not been one song I didn't like off that playlist. Dissonant Death Metal. Dissonant Death Metal songs tend to be more adventurous and less bound to traditional riff chorus riff structures than more straightforward death metal. But it's hardly the only metal subgenre that emphasizes that kind of compositional freedom. I guess this is just death metal that has nothing special attached to it other than the structure of the song. I can be wrong because I can't find too much detail on this genre. We know what death metal is, and the meaning of dissonant is lacking harmony. Example being irregular dissonant chords. To be honest, I'm kind of afraid to list bands just because it could be wrong. But I'm gonna do it anyway because I got big fat balls. You can check out Gorguts and Rune. Blackened Speed Metal. This is a subgenre of black metal that describes black metal bands with speed metal influence. Speed metal was one of the first genres on this super long list. So as a quick reminder, it's just a fine line between thrash and heavy metal that's a little more melodic. Bands include Ranger, Division Speed, and Hell Ripper. Cybergrind. Cybergrind is a combination of grindcore taking to an even more rapid fire extreme but also added electronic dimensions and computer generated noises and drum machines. Definitely industrial and breakcore feeling as well. And clean singing can also be a part of it sometimes. This is like if grindcore caught a computer virus. Bands include Mulk and Zombie Shark. Jazz Grind. This is a genre that is so fucking slept on. This is grindcore with jazz instruments and elements thrown into mix and it's so fucking cool. Bands like to get fast and noisy with the brass instruments and overall get super experimental with the combination. Some cool bands in the genre is Painkiller, Lefty Fish, and Child Abuse. Power Violence. Power Violence features fast and frantic style with rapid tempo changes, blending intense blast beats with slower sludge-like breakdowns. It often includes sound bites or noise as well, and like a lot of hardcore and punk genres, Lyrically, it's politically driven and the songs are like a minute long. Bands include Spaz, Zulu, and Man is the Bastard. Black and Deathcore. Black and Deathcore is a combination of black metal and deathcore to varying degrees. While it isn't fundamentally very different from traditional deathcore, it tends to employ more treble and delay in the riffs to give it a blackened feel. And often it uses symphonic black metal style keys and synth, and shrieked vocals. Bands include Immortal Disfigurement, Worm Shepherd, and Mental Cruelty. Down Tempo Deathcore. Down Tempo Deathcore is a subgenre of deathcore that incorporates slower, more atmospheric elements into the mix. The music is characterized by its heavy downtuned guitars, pounding drums, and guttural vocals. You can check out Black Tongue, Bound in Fear, and Humanity's Last Breath. Symphotic Blackened Death Metal. I don't know if there's much of a scene here just because I can't find that much information, but I'd imagine it's symphonic death metal, but blackened. And we all know by now, blackened a lot of the time just means a black metal atmosphere with sometimes using black metal shrieking. It looks like some bands here would be Withersake, Seraph and Trait, and Empyrean Throne. 
progressive blackened death metal. It typically features the aggressive and fast-paced nature of death metal, combined with the dark and atmospheric qualities of black metal. The music often incorporates blast beaks, tremolo picked guitar riffs, and harsh vocals, while also incorporating themes of darkness and anti-religion. Bands include Hath, Dissolve, and Witch Casket. Mincecore. Mincecore is a niche subgenre of grindcore with an emphasis on musical simplicity, a DIY ethic, and a political message of anarchism, anarchy, ana anarchy, anarchism, anarchism, anarchism. I don't know. The band you can check out is Unholy Grave. Christian thrash metal. You know what it is. Melodic deathcore. Melodic deathcore is a subgenre of metalcore that combines elements of melodic death metal and metalcore. It is characterized by its heavy use of distorted guitars, blast beats, and double bass drumming, as well as an incorporation of melodic guitar riffs and solos. Bands include Make Them Suffer, Shadow of Intent, and As Blood Runs Black. Slam Deathcore It's characterized by its heavy use of breakdowns, slow tempos, and brutal guttural vocals. The genre is known for its aggressive and powerful sound, often incorporating elements from other extreme genres such as grindcore and brutal death metal. Bands include K9, Zero Theory, and Snuffed On Sight. Symphotic Deathcore Symphotic Deathcore often features complex arrangements, intricate guitar work, and intense guttural vocals. It's known for its emphasis on technical proficiency and its use of complex time signatures and rhythms. Here you can check out Winds of Plague, Born of Osiris, and Die Art is Murder. Power Deathcore This is the blend of power metal and deathcore, and I think it's insane. Listening to the band Dragon Corpse is like going through a journey. It's super heavy and loud, but it has that power metal influence that makes me feel like I'm facing the final boss of power or epic doom. I'm surprised how well this band actually pulled it off. Welcome to layer 6. It's now dark outside, so the lighting might be fucked, but we'll, we'll see what happens. But I do have good news and I got bad news. The good news is we're almost done. Good job, champ. But the bad news is that pretty much every genre we're about to talk about is fucking insane. Starting with a genre I already made an entire video on. DSBM, aka Depressive Metal Black Metal. A subgenre of black metal which focuses on themes of suicide, self-mutilation, negative energy, and emotional imbalance or unrest. Musically, Depressive Black Metal features an overall monotonous sound, repetitive and frequently droning guitars, apathetic drums, occasional minimalistic keyboards, and atmospheric ambient passages. In short, the darkest black metal can actually get. The lyrics, the energy, the ambiance, everything. You can check out Silencer, Nocturnal Depression, and Zather. On black metal, or Christian black metal. The opposite of DSBM. Instead of the lyrical content being revolved around depressing shit, it's revolved around Christianity. Now that I think of it, probably just as scary. Depends on who you ask. Here you can check out Horde, Ancestor, and Crimson Moonlight. Cosmic black metal. By the looks of it, it seems like this genre takes black metal and puts it in space. It seems like somewhat traditional black metal, but instead of a complete blackened atmosphere, it's an atmosphere that blends black with a spacey, empty energy, as if you're lost in this deep part of the universe, like the song Echoes. Sometimes it sounds like you're breathing in a spacesuit and has this beautiful, holy shit, I'm exploring space for the first time ambience. Bands include Alcaris and Lumnos. Black Gaze. This combines black metal and shoegaze. The genre is interesting as it removes the complete darkness from its black metal roots, but keeps the coldness and bleakness of the genre it's also known for. It's like we're at the light at the end of this dark tunnel and we're finally getting the opposite side of the black metal spectrum. We're discovering shit that's actually beautiful. Bands include Alcest, Ghost Bath, and Seaweed Mustache. Brutal Black Metal. This genre is just black metal, but brutal. And as we know by now, when a genre is brutal, it typically means pushing the ferocious and violent nature of the genre further into heavier territories, such as compact song structures and loud high-speed riffing. Bands include Horn Crowned and Celestial Swarm. Noise Grind. This is very noisy grindcore. The goal is to achieve a harsher sound with much less care for the structure or coherence than regular grindcore. Bands include Holy Grinder, Seat Star Sep, and Full of Hell. Dungeon Synth. 
Dungeon Synth is a genre of electronic music that merges elements of black metal and dark ambient paired with medieval and fantasy styles of music, and lyrics with high fantasy themes. Bands include Mortis, Depressive Silence, or Old Sorcery. Avant-Garde Black Metal this is black metal with an avant-garde or experimental approach and is considered one of the most extreme, complex, and terrifying genre. As a quick reminder, avant-garde just means experimental or unusual. You could check out Psy or you could check out Cacao. Sludgecore. This is sludge metal bands who lean more towards hardcore, so just imagine a much slower hardcore that's not as tight and hates pollution. Bands include Crowbar and I Hate God. Nor's core. This is just a term for blasty, fast, would be thrashy if it wasn't played at 400 BPM black metal. Here you can check out Marduk, blackened goth metal. This is goth metal. As a refresher, Dracula started a metal band, and then you blacken it with the atmosphere. Bands include Wrath of Killerstein and Notch Blut, clown core. I'm not too sure why this is on the iceberg, but this is one of my favorite bands of all time, so I don't mind talking about it. Clowncore is not a genre, it's a band that fuses jazz grind with clown sounds, melodies, and aesthetic. New Deathcore. You guessed it, Deathcore and New Metal having a baby. Bands include Spite, Still Bloom, and Codeine King. Experimental Deathcore. This is just Deathcore taken to a non-traditional extent. A lot of bands in this genre give me like a big uwu energy, like uwu, I'm heavy and we're also cute at the same time. Roar. Bands include I Wrestled a Bear Once, Eat a Helicopter, and This Place is a Zoo. Yeah, some Raw XD shit. Now you get what I'm saying. Rap Deathcore. This is like rap metal, but the vocalist raps over deathcore instrumentals, and it doesn't have to be completely rapped either. This genre has been attempted time and time again, and I feel like the band to truly do it in its cleanest and most hype way possible is Filth. Very fitting name, because this band is fucking disgusting. Other rap deathcore, you can check out Hunt the Dinosaur and to some extent Attila, but I do feel like Attila is more like metalcore leaning. Industrial deathcore. This is a combo of industrial elements and deathcore, and Jesus, dude, you gotta check out Alien Autopsy. Technical deathcore. This is deathcore that particularly focuses on challenging, demanding instrumental skill and complex songwriting. Here you can see Obscura or Gorguts. Gothic Deathcore. This is Deathcore, but takes the Gothic elements like aesthetic and atmosphere. Imagine Deathcore, but with a Gothic ambience layered under it. For this, you can check out Soul Soul or Make Them Suffer. Christian Deathcore. Come on, bro. Now we're in layer seven. We have three layers left, but there's only a few genres per layer. And that means because we're right there towards the end, shit's gonna get gross. Shit's gonna get violent. And shit's gonna get weird. Porno grind. This is grindcore, but lyrically it deals with sexual and graphic themes and often include moaning and audio clips of porn scenes, hence the name. Here we have bands like Gut, Creamface, and Anal Whore. Gore Noise. One of the most wild genres on this list for sure. Gore Noise is an extreme variant of gore grind that combines and subverts its gore grind and grindcore elements with brash noise music. So not only is it chaotic as fuck, but having lyrical and gory themes makes the genre much worse. And you know we're getting obscure because a lot of bands I'm finding, and not just gore noise, but in porno grind as well, are solo projects. Like imagine trying to find one person in your area that actually wants to fucking write shit about gore and make it as noisy as possible. Here we have anal birth and urinary tract infection from severe pus clots. Doom gaze. This is shoegaze and drone doom metal together. Just imagine extremely depressing and thick shoegaze. It can be sluggish and extremely slow, helping emphasize the dark aura around the genre. Bands include True Widow and Have a Nice Life. Blackened Noise. This is noise characterized by its harsh and abrasive sound, often featuring heavily distorted and manipulated sounds. Feedback and static and has some black metal riffage. Here we have Anal Throne, Ritual Violence, and a Doctrine of Flesh. War Noise. War Noise is war metal that features noise elements, prominently through waves of feedback and harsh noise. Bring some Advil to the fucking listen party. Alien Core. Alien Core is deathcore centered around the cosmos and 
extraterrestrial life. I don't know if I said that right, but whatever. It often brings cool alien and futuristic sounds too, like laser beams and shit. Rings of Saturn are the ones that really like popularize this sound, but you could also check out Enterprise Earth, Sludge Noise. This is sludge metal with noise music. I think out of the entire iceberg, this is by far the ugliest sounding genre. It's just super slow and messy and obviously there's unwanted noise. Here we have Drunken Hell, Brain Bombs, and Rusted Shut, Crust Grind. This is a fusion of grindcore and crust punk, which is interesting because grindcore is a subgenre of crust punk. This genre is pretty cool. It's super fast and in your face and a band I enjoyed was Worm Rot. You can also check out Disrupt and Extreme Noise Terror. Brutal Death Grind. This is the combination of three of the most insane genres. It's dumb fast, dumb heavy, and dumb loud. I don't know how some of the drummers can play this shit. If you have your parents listen to this, they probably wouldn't even know the drums are drums. It just sounds like a machine that's about to explode. Bands include Teddy the Bear, Mortician, and Mincing Fury. Blackened Sludge Metal. Come on. Come on. You can check out Lord Mantis. Blackened Metalcore. Come on. Metalcore, but blackened. It is a little hard to find bands in this genre, though, because it seems like a lot of them just go down the deathcore route rather than the metalcore. But I did find a few bands, Escapes to Serenity, Fushi, and Eden is Gone. Slamming Breakdown. This is a super heavy and thick genre with hardcore and deathcore elements. You'll find very slow and low breakdowns, screams, blast beats, and just overall angry and aggressive vocals with occasional hip hop influence. Bands include Chamber of Allens and Carbine. Brutal Deathcore. This is heavier deathcore, but heavier leaning towards hardcore. So you'll find some hardcore influence like aggressive vocals instead of screamy. And you could also find some gang vocals. You can check out Braces, The Guild, and Sidious. Last in this tier we have Folk Deathcore. A lot of these genres are super niche and it's starting to get tough finding bands. But this is Deathcore with folk elements and influence. You can check out Mental Cruelty. Layer 8 of 9. At this point we're so deep in the iceberg I feel the water pressure on me. Shit's about to get noisy. Harsh Noise Grind. This is noisy grindcore, but doubled. There are so many layers stacked together, it's straight up static. There aren't any dynamics, rhythm, melody, nothing. This shit gets me anxious. Here you can check out Eddie X Murphy. Christian Gore Noise. It seems like it's contradicting because Gore Noise is noise music that's super loud, gory, and fast. And then you got God. This is just Gore Noise with Christian driven lyrics. You can check out Demonic Dismemberment. Vomit noise. This shit is nasty. This is just noisy, super fast-paced grindcore slash crust-esque music with themes, cover art, and lyrical content based around vomiting and shitting. And even adding these wet sound effects throughout the song and wet effects in the voice making the vocalist sound like some sort of swamp man. Bands include gingivitis and bloat. Frog noise. Frog noise is a singing style which is mostly used by brutal death metal or grindcore bands. Frog noise sounds like the croak of a frog and is very similar to the pig squeal singing style. Here you can check out gore scum. Post grindcore. So we learned what grindcore is and we know what post means. Breaking traditional standards. So do the math. Here we have Megadis and failure trace of human race. Funk deathcore. This is the funk and deathcore combo popularized by Nick Nocturnal. I'll just show you. Starting out with a super hard rap sample. Throwing down a funk melody. The final layer. The pressure is so crazy, you're finally crushed. You're dead. You made it to the end. There's only three genres left. You got this. Pathological gore noise. The difference between gore noise and pathological gore noise is pathological gore noise is the made up name for bands who are very true to the carcass tradition. Check out Cunt Pump, Blackened Crust Grind. Crust Grind, which again is super fast and in your face without too much care for the tightness, but we blacken it. You can check out Manfario, Blackened Gore Grind. I know we were hoping the final genre would have been something insane, but it's just black metal and gore grind fused. I kind of think the better fitting final genre would have been like vomit noise or something. But what do you think? Are you going to check out any of the genres I mentioned? Now, if you want more weird genres, I highly suggest this video I did. There's a lot of genres on here I didn't cover in this iceberg because they're not considered metal. So go check that out.